Toadjam and Earl 2 Panic on Funkatron is a sequel to the popular, and at the time, highly acclaimed title, Toadjam and Earl. Both were developed by Johnson Vu Sanger Productions and published by Sega. Both were released on the Sega's Mega Drive and Genesis console, being released in North America in 1993 and later released for PAL reasons at the start of 1994. The story sees our main heroes having escaped from Earth in their previous adventure and arriving safely back on the homeworld of Funkatron. Unfortunately for them, it seems they've unintentionally smuggled back some illegal aliens who are now running amok in Funkatron distressing the population. Needless to say, Funkatronian residents are a bit pissed. Now this is where you come in. It's your job to help Togemino rid the planet of the human menace and ultimately restore equilibrium to Funkatron. Toadjam Roll 2 is a two-player co-op adventure platformer, though you can play alone. Your objective is to scour each level for human beings using the Earthling Detector, trap them with the magic jars, and fling them into the space shuttles at the end of the level. Along the way you'll find numerous items like food and health, presents that give you more coins, presents containing special weapons, encounter numerous NPCs, and have the chance to play a variety of minigames that will assist you in your task. The controls in this game are very tight. You have a lot of control over the jumps and the movement in general. The ability to interact with most of the scenery is a nice touch too. Shaking trees, lifting manholes, and parting bushes to find presents, traps and enemies adds a lot of depth to the game. When playing co-op with a friend, I sometimes feel the sprites are too big and you find yourself fighting for screen space. But in time you become accustomed to it and it doesn't really bother you after a while. All the levels are very colourful and very well drawn, and really help immerse you in your visit to Funkatron. They can be very large at times and quite tricky to traverse, and are full of hidden platforms. This can result in you taking blind leaps of faith at times, but if you use your Funk Scan properly, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Within all these levels you'll encounter a wide variety of the resident Funkatronians, some of which may even spark up a conversation with you. Sometimes this is just mindless banter, but other times they even give you clues to secret areas and items. And if you feel the need, you can even ring their doorbells to see what's up. Using the funk scan to see what's hidden in trees and bushes before inspecting them is a very clever mechanic. It can also be used to find hidden doorways and hidden items like food and presents. Another special move is the Funk Teleporter, which you can use to pass through certain walls or escape danger. Hidden in presence across levels are three special weapons. The Super Jars, which allow you to trap an earthling in one hit. The Panic Button, which has you running around frantically throwing jars in every direction whilst not taking any damage. And finally the Funk Vacuum. The vacuum sucks in all the enemies on the screen and also captures the ones hiding in bushes and trees as well. In certain circumstances you may unlock a doorway to the funk dimension. This is a psychedelic zone of pure funk where you can stock up on points. There's lots of fun and it's very useful as you're granted a new life every 10,000 points. Every now and again you'll meet one of Toejam Girl's good friends chilling out with a beatbox. If you pop a coin in the meter you can sit and jam out with your buddy. This is mainly to stock up on funk, but it can also be a lot of fun too, as long as you don't suck like me. There's bouncy fungus placed throughout the game, but certain patches will have a coin meter next to them. 
Now this is your time to show off some cool flips, impress the judges, and earn some more points. And if you're really good, they may even give you some super jars or a funk vac. Personally for me, ToeJam 2 has some of the greatest animation I've seen on a 16-bit console. The liberal use of vibrant colour, how well the characters have been animated, and the overall striking psychedelic look of the game are all very impressive. There's very little slowdown in this game, which is quite surprising given how much things are going on the screen sometimes. This is where the game really shines next to most other titles. The music is just stunning. I don't think I've heard such a funky soundtrack in all my days of playing video games. The sound they have produced actually puts a lot of other games to shame. Not only is the music a joy to listen to, but the sound effects are spot on too. Whether it's the sound of eating in a burger, or one of the sampled voices when collecting the present, you never think for a moment it could be any better. This title has been criminally overlooked over the years, and is rarely remembered of fondly. Though its initial reviews on release were good, its more recent reviews in regard to its release on Nintendo Wii were a little bit unfavourable for my liking. It seems like the sequel has always been living in the shadow of its first title, which of course I liked, but I don't really see it as a standout title. I think I'd much rather have the sequel here. The game was released at a time when the world was expecting the next big Sonic game. There were previews of Streets of Rage 3 in magazines, and there was a buzz around Shiny Entertainment and their Earthworm Jim title. With this, and the fact that the Genesis and Mega Drive already had a huge platform library, and gamers were already hearing things about the next-gen consoles, I think the game just got lost in all. Though the original was a cult classic, it wasn't enough to create a buzz for a sequel, especially one taking a very different direction from its predecessor in a market already oversaturated with similar titles. Overall I think this is a fantastic title. It's got great graphics, it's fantastic music and sound effects, and the variety of gameplay due to the minigames and the two-player co-op mode just makes it an all-round fun experience. To be a little bit critical though, I think the blind leaps of faith can be pretty frustrating, and the screen can feel a bit small at times too, with the large sprites, but seeing as they're so detailed and the fact that you kind of get used to it, I think you can kind of overlook it. I'd wholly recommend this title to any Mega Drive owners with a love for platform games. The game plays really well, it looks great, the music is fantastic, and the fact that you can play it through with a friend, and it's really cheap on eBay, you've got no reason not to buy this. This has been Carnivore2099 with my review of Toe Jam and Earl Panic on Funkatron. Hope you enjoyed it and really look forward to doing the next one. Take it easy guys.